Now, all week, we've been looking at the various ways the NHS in Sussex is trying to take pressure off our hospitals. We've seen how doctors' surgeries are widening the services they offer to diagnose and treat people without them having to see a GP. And yesterday, we saw how urgent care teams are offering people care in their own homes to avoid the need to admit them to hospital. Well, today, our health correspondent Mark Norman has been looking at another way of keeping patients out of hospital, virtual wards. We're on our way to see a patient who called 999 for an ambulance on Christmas Eve after suffering breathing difficulties. The paramedics realised he might be better off not going into hospital and instead contacted the virtual ward team from East Sussex to try and keep the patient in his own home. Uh, we managed to keep the patient at home for 10 days he was with us and um, we initially monitored physically on a daily basis. Uh, we got to a position with the patient where we felt comfortable that we could monitor virtually um, and the whole process worked perfectly well and we kept the patient at home safely. I'm feeling very well. Yes. Is there any shortness of breath? For the patient, um, being put on a virtual no, ward I, involves I, them being given an appropriate kit to I, monitor I, their own condition, an internet-linked mobile device that delivers those results to clinical staff and 24-hour access to nurses. They gave me um, a blood pressure which was put on my arm, but this was all controlled by an iPad. I can understand people at the first being a bit concerned because you've got to put the charge on and to put the machine on. Completely easy, no problem whatsoever. The other thing was I was in contact. I felt I was in contact all the time, which I was. I think we know we're doing the right thing. We know that patients recover better in their own homes, you know, they've got their comforts around them, their families, their loved ones. You know, they generally feel more comfortable at home and it aids their recovery. You know, patients stay in hospital too long and, you know, can lose their muscle strength real quickly, reduces the chances of them living independently and it's really hard to recover from. To hear that. And the scheme is being pushed by the NHS nationally who want to create more than a thousand virtual beds in Kent, Sussex and Surrey before the end of the year. This chapter mark is with me now. You mentioned that plan to create thousands of virtual wards beds. Are there any downsides to this plan? Yeah, I think there probably are. At the moment, it's working really well, as you've just seen. I think it genuinely is, but I think it's quite small scale. So how do you ramp it up whilst dealing with all the other huge issues around demand and that the hospitals are facing? And the plans are really ambitious. The NHS in England wants to see 50 virtual beds for every 100,000 people. What does that mean in Kent, Sussex and Surrey? That's around 2,000 beds. And then you've got to staff those. I think the staff like the idea, but where are you going to nick the staff from, from other hospitals? How do you do it all whilst dealing with the demand? I think that's the, the real challenge. Now, I know all week we've been looking at the various pressures on the NHS in Sussex in particular, and tomorrow you're interviewing the boss of NHS Sussex. Yeah, and I think we've seen a lot of nice, positive things this week, haven't we? But I think the questions for him really should centre, and I'll try and do this, centre around... People still can't get a GP appointment, still can't get an ambulance quickly, you know, go to A&E and it's rammed and hospitals can't get patients out the other end. How do you make those big changes? Are these small changes going to be enough to do that? And we'll, we'll find out, we'll interview him tomorrow and see what he has yeah, to say. Yeah, we'll be watching for your questions I and his so. answers, Mark. Thank you.